Thank you. Last time. Well, we're at the appointed hour. Um, welcome everyone to the uh, Tuesday, January 3rd, 2023, meeting of the Waterbury Select Board. A new year, a new town manager. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Tom. Even though you're, you're not so new anymore, <laughs> but you're new. We, we don't have Bill anymore today. Uh, <laughs> The first thing is that we need to do is approve the agenda. Mm -hmm. Are there any? Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? I'll move to approve the agenda. I'll second. Second. Discussion. I just want to add a very quick discussion. We could just add that under uh, in the manager's item on fireworks for NQID. Just very briefly. It will take some of Less than five minutes. Okay. Any other discussion on the agenda? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Next item is the consent agenda item of minutes of the December 19, 2022 meeting. I have a motion to approve. Awesome. Well, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the consent agenda items? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 We oppose. Any abstentions? Motion passes. Now is the time on the agenda for the public. If anyone uh, wishes to say uh, something that's not on the formal agenda, we'd be glad to hear a brief presentation from you. Anyone? There being none, we'll move on to the manager's items. And Tom, I'll send it over to you. Sure, I think Karen, you can set that up. That seat ready for you. I think it's Chair. Yes. Hello, everyone. I have the crazy stack. Um, so you asked me to show up on my first day back from vacation. <laughs> and I came to you out on the road to get slick out there. Um, no, it was my pleasure to be here. I was, I'm, I'm sorry I wasn't as efficient getting my budget request to you earlier um, in the, uh, before the holidays. Uh, but we, our W has been going, undergoing transition. And so we've been multitasking in many ways. But um, my transition is over. We've hired in a new marketing trip. Today, Ooh. so <laughs> yes, oh, very thrilled. <laughs> um, he's got a lot of, a lot of learning to do. You'll get to meet him some more one time. Yes. Um, so my request is uh, threefold. It always it has been that way for a while. You, we have a um, memorandum of understanding with the town of Waterbury um, on economic development services. And uh, we've been, um, Mark Camillo is our economic development director and has been with us for I think, almost two years. Uh, I've listed some of his recent successes. He was integral to helping us find a new tenant to the train station, which was an incredible amount of work, but hopefully you've been down to Black Cap <laughs> Cafe. It's wonderful and it's very exciting. And um, he's very, very much focused on. Um, affordable housing and housing in the town of Waterbury and was uh, working with EFUD on all of the 51 South Main Street and Down Street work. Um, so um, on that uh, topic, we have asked for a 3% increase in your monthly payment to revitalize the water grant for economic development services. Um, if you recall, if you have experienced it yourself, uh, life's a little more expensive. That it used to be, and as a small nonprofit with a very, um, sort of, I want to say limited resources, because I what I feel really good about is that we have a wide range of resources, but they do ebb and flow, and times are tough, and expenses have increased, um, and therefore being able to increase the budget a little bit will support um, Mark um, and the work that he does. Um, the second item is marketing and promotion and general operations. If you recall last year, we asked for a um, increase to our general operations um, funding from 
thousand, which was a thousand dollars a month to fifteen hundred dollars a month, and uh, you um, generously uh, provided that, as well as you've given us money for marketing and promotion for years. Uh, marketing and promotion that's what our marketing associate does um he keeps the uh town out in the world of sending bringing people here visitors um to spend their money in our businesses and keep us vital uh, for everything uh so that is um somewhat of that is a, a little tiny piece of increase on that budget um as we've asked for a small 3% increase in our general operations money, um, the last year is 750 increase from last year. Um, and then design and beautification. This was the big one last year. Uh, we, I had many conversations with Bill Shepelek, Steve, Fox Beach, um, all around how the town is beautified and acknowledged uh, that revitalizing Waterbury is the primary is their one of their primary responsibilities is making sure the town looks good, and um, that this was a significant um, that there were significant expenses that uh, were sort of out of our control. We really needed help to pay for it from the town. And one of the other components is that uh, as much as we love volunteers, volunteers can't do everything. And there were health safety issues around having volunteers, often 60 plus years old, on ladders, hanging things in the winter or the spring or the fall. Um, that was a liability issue that was just a full nightmare. Um, and we, um, you generally, um, gave us, uh, added to our budget, this $9,600 support to beautify um, our town. So um, the, the increases to our budget um, are sort of twofold. There's the 3% uh, increase to economic development, and then the nominal increase to the general operations, which is $750, um, because it's spread out for nine months a year, because our budget review starts on April 1st. <laughs> um, I have provided some revenue stream information where our funding comes from. Uh, I'm really pleased that, like I said, we really spread it around. Uh, if you pulled out last year's, you would have seen a whole bunch of federal money because we were still living off of PPP loans and um, economic recovery money, uh, which really made life a lot easier for us um, and helped us along. But the good news is we've been able to move that, move away from that and into um, other resources. So I provided you with some revenue streams and how our budget is laid out for this year. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, about the uh, funding and what we're trying to do. I have a question. Okay. Um, can, can you, thank you. Can you refresh my memory on, <clears throat> is the old, is the former tenant still paying rent at the train station or is that contract entirely run out? It's okay. Well, it didn't run out. We negotiated okay. a buyout. Yeah. I there, remember how long that Their lease was through 2026. Mm -hmm. We had a brilliant lawyer write that lease 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. It had no exit clause. And so therefore, as much as Kira and Dr. Pepper really thought we were little put up people up in Vermont, they could get away with just getting out of it. We we aren't little put up people in Vermont. <laughs> we negotiated an excellent um uh ex uh, excellent buyout. Mm -hmm. What it is allows us to do is to bring in a tenant at a um, below market rate for the tenant for the lease to start because the buyout backfills that for about three and a half years. Mm -hmm. And then by the time their rent is up to full market rate, what we would expect from it, which by the way is 25% less than what Cure Dr. Pepper would have been paying. Mm -hmm. So we'll never get what they would pay when mm -hmm. he was getting. Um, we bring that up, that money will go away, but we will be um we'll we'll we will be financially capable of taking that rent in June. Mm -hmm. It's been interesting when new tenants arrived and we've learned a lot of things like don't run your boiler for two years and get what? It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 
who uh, should have known that's what happened during the pandemic. So there were, we had some major repairs to the um, systems. And the good news is we had this buyout money from KDP to pay for it. So we were, were able to uh, take care of the building, uh, bring it completely up to speed. It's now ADA accessible in a much better way than it used to be with a ramp on the front mm -hmm. um, that was approved by historical preservation so that we were making sure we weren't um, doing anything to the structure. If you weren't aware, last summer we did full repaint a uh, paint job $20,000 to repaint the building. I know that looks fabulous. It really <laughs> looks fabulous. Um, we're very, very proud of it. And uh, Black Cap is really thrilled to be in that space. Thanks. Um, yeah, uh, Karen, you, you indicated you know, things are getting more expensive, so I would expect to be seeing a little bit larger budget. Um, but your uh, projected revenues for 2023 are actually below 2022. Um, yeah. And you want to know uh, why? <laughs> I do. And I'm specifically interested in the, uh, the dramatic uh, decrease in the earned in income. So, the truth so here's the deal what in that earned income includes $70,000 raised for the Stowe Street Alley project. Mm. Uh -huh. So, I cannot project that kind of fundraising for the coming year. So I don't include it in the budget. And it was for a specific purpose. And for so a it was very specific yeah, purpose. So when that money came in, it is restricted. Mm -hmm. So we raised a re an amazing amount of money and we've spent 25,000 of it already. Mm -hmm. um, and we have 50,000 in the bank for the project. So what you don't see is my cross my fingers guesstimate what we're going to raise this year for the Stowe Street Alley project. I expect a three thousand minimum. Mm -hmm. um, I see this project costing us between one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Um, the fact that we raised seventy thousand to start is yeah, pretty mind blowing. Yeah. Um, and uh, we we're doing some grants and things like that. So that's where that number is really different. The other little one is that the Water Arts Fest. Um, you weren't there? First of all, what an amazing event it was mm -hmm. this year. Yeah. But there were a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we had a lot of new expenses. And so our earned income and what we raised from that um, was about $10,000 less than we did last year, than we've done in the previous years. Mm -hmm. I expect it to be back up full speed ahead this year. Um, because we had some one time expenses. But, you know, it's, people were still coming out of their shell to some extent for the event. Um, and, yeah, the concert seemed very well. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. I just need perfect weather again. Mm -hmm. Anyone want to help me get there? <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of what Roger kind of hit my question about the earned income. But is the $21,000, what of that is included for this coming year's arts fest? Is that all arts fest? It's 90%. Okay. It's almost 100% arts fest. I'm looking at it. vendor's fees, raffle, silent auction, earned income. What else? If we have a one off silent auction, it might be a couple thousand dollars, but it's really mostly silent auction. I mean, it's mostly arts fest, earned income. So we use all the fees and things like that. Uh, Donations at the gate that people make to us. Other questions? Yeah. Um, back to the uh, train station there with, with the uh, deal you had with uh, Jerry Johnson Pepper and um, the, the additional revenue that you got from structuring the deal the way you did. And then fitting the new tenant, uh, was there any consideration to pull some of that money aside for the maintenance of that building for future? Yes. Oh. We have money set aside in the okay. reserve. Every year we put another $2,500 to $3,000. We actually spent it down to the building last year, but we needed to just buy out so we can keep it. Um, maintaining that building, we consider that building to be a gem. 
you know, it's just one of those shiny, beautiful pieces. And um, we take, we do not take its care lightly. Uh, one of the reasons we really like our campus is that they feel the same about the building. And so they, in our lease for them, they have certain requirements on what they will be required so my next question is and maybe it's more of a I'm told it's about, unlike the municipality where in a, in a sense all the money just gets thrown into the general fund and then it's distributed out from the department you have to take each one of your line items uh, kind of as its own separate entity, right? I mean, because money that gets appropriated for those things, you just can't take from that and stick it somewhere else. So it's, uh, yeah. you know, I don't ever usually share our our budget at this point in time. It's not finished yet, but actually Bill and Tom asked me to share it with them right before Christmas. And I said, I would get it to you in time. And I got it to you like at two this afternoon. I apologize. <laughs> It's um, available. We I give a roll up budget that's available to the public, but um, a basic explanation we have um, classes, program areas, economic development, design, tourism and marketing, watering mm -hmm. arts fest. Those are all, and that's why the request that's I guys got copies of it, so mm -hmm. you saw it. Okay, um, and then the subtotal is our general operations for our organization. Or you know, it's a subtotal. Then we budget in the train station. And once we hit the train station, um, and as you notice, the train station is how we balance our budget. It always has been. It always will be. The budgets that are outside of that Stowe Street Alley project that is a standalone, very restricted. If you remember the the train sculpture project, um, that one was fifty eight thousand dollars. We managed that outside as a restricted funds. And then the other line in there is Waterbury box sets because it's a different financial um, structure of the uh, track. So I guess I want to say, you know, great job for managing all those separately and kind of that itself has to be a you know an additional task. Well, if you look under here under professional fees, forty thousand dollars. <laughs> 13 of that is my bookie. <laughs> Trust me, I, um, yeah. But I, I, I can't, I, you didn't know I've been here for seven years. <laughs> and I've worked really hard to design a budget and design a process. I know it like the back of my hand. Mm -hmm. um, it used to take me two days to prepare our annual budget. It takes me about two and a half hours now because I can, I just know how it works. Um, I'm really proud of that yeah. we're able to run this organization and with the funding sources that we do. And 100%, we can't do it without that. So have you gone into what you thought? Have you, have you anticipated that there might be a time when you decide to jump ship and maybe you have somebody? <laughs> <laughs> Behind me is Julie Fraley. No, Julie, she is our board chair and she is looking at your people eyes. <laughs> and uh, that board is not going to let her go. <laughs> so um, that is not a topic of conversation that has come up. I, I would suggest that succession planning is not a bad idea. It never is. So, as Someone yeah. <laughs> I just have personal experience. Somebody I know that stepped into a position that was very difficult. Uh, difficult for that person to be put into ship. Well, I will share not that there was any, you know, that we're off on top. Or not, I don't know, but when I came on in 2015, we were ending the year with a $10,000 deficit. In the previous year, RW ended the year with a $20,000 deficit. They figured out that their executive director wasn't doing a very good job. She actually said they, she didn't care about finance. She didn't pay attention to her. 
first thing I did on January 15th ish, like three weeks in, is wrote a budget that they'd never seen before. And it included something called rent. <laughs> and by the way, you may not want to know this, but we used to steal our internet from the police department. And people, <laughs> people brought their toilet paper in from the off from the house. And um we used, you know, so I just refused to work for an organization. I consider our WA professional organization. Uh, it's a business to run it, we run it like a business. Consider going to the state house. No. <laughs> Caught in awesome. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, Alyssa. Uh, I'm way up in the way here. I'm thinking of some of the budgets as someone who almost goes to work for an hour for 20 years. Um, can you just speak briefly to the designated downtown and how you relate to the state and other downtown in the state? It's a huge benefit. Oh, yeah. Uh, it is hard to say. So um, if you're not familiar with the designated downtown program, and I will tell you, I was thrilled when I heard that Tom was taking this position because I happen to know that St. Albans is a designated downtown and they took full advantage of the programs and that will benefit Waterbury in many ways. Vermont has a designated downtown program, a designated downtown, there are 23 designated downtowns. You have to, uh, the town applies. So this town applied for a designation at one point. And um, gosh, I think for us, it's about 16, 17 years ago at this point. And Waterbury, um, one of the requirements of being a designated downtown is you're required to have a designated downtown organization. Yours is revitalizing Waterbury. Um, sometimes the organization owner person is based in the town itself, which was Chip Sawyer at St. Albans, um, who's fabulous person. Um, so you have to have a downtown organization and it requires some kind of support from the town, which is what we provide and what we just discussed. Um, every downtown manages it differently. Um, I will tell you that Revitalizing Waterbury is one of the strongest, if not the strongest organization in the town in the state of uh, Vermont. Um, we are the uh, best funded, not just by the town, but by its community and businesses. Um, having the kind of individual memberships, nearly 20, last year's 26, 27 thousand dollars in individual memberships. Um, people who just support our organization, that's unheard of in a lot of these downtowns. Um, a lot of these organizations spend their whole life running fundraising events to keep themselves alive. I refuse to run fundraising events other than the Waterbury Arts Fest, and trust me, the board knows that. Um, so we're really well um, managed where uh, people seek us out for advice on a regular basis. On top of that, the designated downtown gives us access to money. And we're familiar with the downtown transportation fund. Uh, we currently have downtown transportation fund grant that we need to finish in a year. <laughs> we'll talk about that. That's the lead posts and um, trash receptacles in the park. I mean, with the sidewalks. All huge part of the ancient construction is done. Uh, property, historic property, historic property. Yeah. This, Historic property tax credits. Is that what it's called? It's Mark runs this or it runs this program. Um, if you're in the designated downtown, you have a historic property, you can get tax credits for kinds of uh, work that you do. Uh, Henders got $26,000 in tax credits for work she did with her house, with the house that she put her business in. Um, Pro Pig. The, I could still call it the TD Bank building, but we know they got, I think, $136,000 in tax mm -hmm. credits for work they did. The, the to be clear, these are income tax credits. <laughs> so there's tax credits and this incredible resources. Uh, the designated downtown program is really strong. There are also village uh, designations, which I think there's one up in Waterbury Center. And um, you'll find I'm going to be encouraging the town to apply for a better connections grant for the Waterbury Center Village, which will allow them to get access to this money because only limited people can get access to money, but you have to go through steps to get to Yeah, my quick highlight was just going to be I mean, this year alone, we're spending about $200,000 of a grant um, inside the state. And that is a few years. That's mentioned before. 
four impacts kind of had that similar use for now, including the transition stone storm. So I think that's a really good right. Job. Right. Those are the new ones that just got done. Yeah. Right. So community members, in addition to everything else, are going to do it. And this last round of downtown transportation credits, because they had one and a half million dollars, which is a rare number for them um, to spend because of ARPA money. Every downtown could apply. You could apply for two hundred thousand, not the usual one hundred thousand, and you only needed a ten percent match, not a twenty percent match. And I sat at this table with Bill and Steve and said, "You guys, we have to, we have to come up with a project to apply for this ten thousand. We cannot leave this money. In. For a twenty thousand dollar investment goes from now, get two hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> which, then, which then tells you why it's such a good investment to support. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that over and over. You know, I always leave by saying, I do all the evil stuff that you don't want. <laughs> That's huge to recognize. Yeah. I do have a question. Yes. Um, under your payroll, mm -hmm. I assume those are like the three different positions that you have uh and your payroll represents roughly a little over half of what you're operating just curious um payroll benefits only twenty four hundred dollars we you probably so, not offering much in the way of i am going to be honest um we really struggled to hire marketing with this but our salaries are below market rate okay um i had to adjust our salaries to even begin to hire a marketing person that was beginner he graduated five months ago okay never held a job before i think he's fabulous he's going to do a great job but I could not pay better than that. We have no benefits. Um, Julie, who sits behind me, is an HR professional, and she was incredibly aware of the fact that we don't provide benefits. We provide a flexible um, work environment, lots of vacation and sick time. Um, I support people in every lots of professional development, everything I can possibly do. Uh, if this town of Waterbury wanted to figure out how we could get on your health benefits, that would be awesome. <laughs> I don't think that's possible, but um, we don't have a solution for that. No, because I know it couldn't be. What is the point for myself? I know it's not health. Well, it's actually a very, very small payment to me to help pay for my health. So, oh, okay. Very small. Payment. <laughs> I, would, I would imagine $2,400. Mm -hmm. That's right. So that's and I negotiated that a couple of years ago because I just like got him up with something. Well, I know it's very much on our radar, but at the moment, if you look at this budget, um, there's no wiggle room right here. No, and and I, I want to commend you for how much you have raised in like to incorporate really and you don't see a lot of the municipal type organizations raise that money. You know, I've always said some of the things, go out and have some fundraisers and do something to, to raise some money. You're doing it in some way, shape, or form. Well, it's really the, helpful. Yeah, the thing is, is you cannot, I cannot go out to the town or businesses and ask them for money to pay myself. It just is a power price. Right. Okay. It's for programs. Right. It's for benefits. It's for things that we do. The fact of the matter is, and that's why our MOU with you is for not for the economic development director, but it's for the economic development uh, services. Service. You give us money, I'll figure out how to provide the services. I provide those services by hiring the director. And then there's extra money to pay for other pieces. So um, if, if we were to have a windfall, I would probably improve our salaries and get help. Okay. Sure, you <laughs> yes. um, um, a couple of questions, comments, I guess, along those lines. I, I do worry about that. I do worry that the 3% increase is a little too low, especially in a year when inflation is maybe it's calm to 7.5%, but it's still way above three. I will let you know that we we made a decision to give Mark a 6% raise um, without thinking that the art town would help support that. So he's gotten that raise 
Um, we did that because we needed to adjust market rate so that we could bring in a market associate that was not equal salary to my market, my economic development director. And then my second comment and question is I think um, in a few months I've been here, but before that, driving around and trying to learn about the town, I think you're getting a lot of value for the design and education money. And um, it'd be interesting to see what Karen could do if that amount increased. That's just my perspective on it. I know exactly. The rotary, we used to put up no. the Christmas direction. I will tell you, right. if you're curious, we have a major focus. We've spent the last three years focused on Main Street. Yeah. It is time to put the 200 and Library Center together. It is our strategic plan. Um, it is a huge focus. The design committee, which thinks about these things, has on their list of so what, how can we take what we're doing down here and bring it up? The, road? Um, the marketing committee, how can we make sure all those businesses up there feel promoted? Economic development, what can we do to support those businesses? Every single component of our strategic plan has to focus on the 100 and water rate center, which is why that better connections plan is one of those. Mm -hmm. um, funding will any addition, any funding we can find will push up the, up the, inter, up the interstate, not that the interstate. <laughs> <laughs> so, that would be quite an upgrade. No, 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 no. So. and then my, my third question is. Um, are you waiting on raising the breast? I think you mentioned seventy thousand dollars to move on Stowe Street. Oh God, no! No, okay. That's the biggest project in the world. Call for artists are going out this week for okay. two major components. Um, we'll probably we have a letter of interest out for a grant application with the Vermont Arts Council. Mm -hmm. um, we did. We, I think we're going to do another pop up. We're at fundraiser, Roger. Yeah. <laughs> I put my name on it. We put my dog's name on it. I don't know. People on Rick, um, we raised twenty thousand dollars with the Rick fundraiser in six weeks. Wow. So I think we're going to do that again, probably around um, middle of February. Um, and at this point, we haven't even written a letter to a single um, major corporation or business in this town asking for major donations. So all the banks, Suncom and Ivy. All those businesses that are over in the um, uh, Pilgrim Park, <laughs> uh, every single one of them will be asking for. I'm a firm believer, just like the <laughs> project, when everyone was like, no, we'll never raise the money. Anytime I turned around, I said, I need, Wayne, I need a thousand dollars. What for? This. Okay, I can get it. I'll raise the money, but the community is really involved. So there's a lot to do. Hey, we can be selling benches. Three thousand for a bench. <laughs> Lots of options. And I guess putting on my other hat for a minute, that if you were ever, if you feel like you're going to be in a situation where um, you're going to be challenged, um, maybe a short-term move back will help you out a little bit. Yes. However, Revitalized Waterway is the fiscal agent for a number of communities, and I don't know if we're interested. I am completely confident. I will be coming to the town for other kinds of support. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> and the DRV has been very helpful, and we've gotten our permits, and we have two tenants, uh, two owners of the property. Um, for the first time, I think, ever, the Masons have come down the stairs and sit in the room and talk with us <laughs> and have meetings. and. We're doing great work with them. And the new, the owner of the other building is actually doing upgrades to her building now that she's learned the value of this town community. Good thing. Last quick question. Is there any interpretation um, opening of the uh, the restaurant here the right hand. No idea. <laughs> I think there's movement. Um, I think maybe sometime next six months. I think that Stones Throw Pizza is open is like a slam dunk. So we should need to go over there and check out the pizza. Um, that's fabulous news. Uh, 
it's a major investment. And Eric is, you know, during the pandemic, it only be so much. Mm -hmm. And I, and now we've locked all the windows. So I think things are happening. I don't have an answer. I don't always know everything. <laughs> How much do you get from your the other municipalities that help with services? Oh, uh, they're endearing gratitude. <laughs> For example, Barry Partnership emailed me this morning to say, Karen, we're thinking about acquiring a building. Can you tell me what you did to mm -hmm. acquire yours? So I explained to her what happened. We, Northfield was thinking about hiring an economic development director, wanted to know what how our system works. So they came, they sent a team of people and we went, have this with you? I was like, I've talked to their current VP, so yeah. it's kind of one of those Vermont things. So, you know, you know, people, oh, um, Shelburne's town manager is interested in thinking about becoming a designated downtown, wanted to know more about it. Call me. Um, we did that. I did a call. I don't, I don't feel <laughs> uh, you know, it's the, there's just too much value to all that. Um, and we work closely with Stowe and Mad River Valley. To see the new ads, which is super cool. Um, that's the 100 uh, advertising from a grant from the town state of Vermont. So, um, yeah, I find money and make it happen. The success of these other towns, along with ours, is a complete benefit of everybody that's here. Thank you, Dave. Where people are thinking, you know, but we all know we live in the best state in the country. <laughs> Thank you for all that you do for the community project. Really valuable. It's a really cool job. Have. I've just been spending spend a day telling a new person who just took a job how how lucky he was to get a job where people were telling you. Um, and that is a great place. But it's a great town, and you guys are really great and deep work for us. And I have an amazing board of directors, so they're all in time. Any further questions? Okay. Thank you. You know where to find me. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, recreation. Sweet. Hello, everyone. My name is Wyatt, and I'm the program coordinator for the town of Waterbury. I started about. You have a sticky note. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good start. It's a good start. Yeah. Good start. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm here to present the budget for uh, the post for next year with Tom here. Um, I guess just breezing through um, just the pool stuff, they're some big uh, and I guess margins for uh, what went on. And I kind of want to go into detail about what happened towards the end of the summertime. Um, so we had uh, known Nick was leaving uh, about a month out of the program. So we were well aware about a month in and I had sat down with Bill and Nick, and uh, ultimately uh, they had chosen me as the best roles for um, finishing out the summer um, and kind of starting off as an intern, kind of going through and learning the ropes of uh, what Nick's job title was. Um, so I ended up finishing out the last two weeks of summer camp. Uh, I thought the flying colors went pretty well, um, but. Just going into like the budget stuff for uh, regular pay, um, you'll notice that it was uh, a little more than uh, last year's, but that was just because of the transitioning phase coming out. Uh, we really needed all hands on deck just to make sure that things were going to get rolled over to the towards the end of the summer. And we um, have the issue that we've talked about a hundred times before. Yes. Everyone's generating more in other places, so we've got to match the market. Yeah, and it's it's almost impossible to find uh, birds today. It is very, very difficult. Um, and I've been working very closely with my day camp staff to kind of try to get us cross training. And Tom and I have already been planning um, with uh, our previous pool director, Keith McKenna being gone. Um, and I will say, I do not think he will be returning. Um, I'd love to have him back. Um, with him being out, uh, we do no longer 
have a school instructor or a lifeguard training certified uh, professional on site anymore. Um, so we cannot offer currently um, any lifeguard training classes through the town of Waterbury. Um, I would love to, and I've talked to Tom about it, because St. Albans has a great program up there, um, about reaching out to them and seeing if they could get our summer lifeguard staff train um, and kind of go over the ropes, maybe with the directors as well, um, just how to manage pools. Um, the management of the pool is a little difficult um, as well. But um, with that being said, I did go over very smoothly towards the end. Um, one of the keys to pools is it's, it's the lifeguards in total. If you've got sufficient number of trained lifeguards, um, you can be open more hours um, and you can teach classes. And if you've got two or three lifeguards teaching a group of 10 kids, um, I don't know what all the handle the rate is for, you know, the summer long pool classes, but there's a significant margin there. And so the, the, the pools that um, break even or come close, um, that's how they tend to do it, is they, um, they have the staff where they can have those economies to scale and open more hours. And the great thing about classes is so often parents of young kids, you know, you expect to take your kid to classes um, sort of evening hours or morning hours, um, which doesn't compete with sort of the general open of some hours. So if we can find the lifeguards um, and get them trained now and have them ready for the summer, so they can hopefully beat this budget. Yeah. What's the rate for a working life like that? Currently, yeah. and then for day camp staff, it's six. Um, which is why I want to also get my staff cross training to have that option if they do need to. We have to go on field trips where we pull out pool staff for occasions. We'll pull like one or two because we have the 200 to 250 kids uh, this past summer attending. Um, and the only other training like there was myself. <laughs> uh, being our cross trained. Um, but having that availability where we can have staff, um, at least through the daytime side, be able to accommodate for the pool, be able to, because um, we have Stella that comes, we have Neck of the Woods that comes. We, we have at least one other program every day of the week down there inside of ourselves. Um, so it's always busy during public swim time. Um, and how many lifeguards are you budgeting for? Um, we had eight over the past summer. I think eight's a great number. It's just, um, I will tie it. The directors didn't do a great um, job coordinating with time leave and vacation time for summers, but they are high schoolers, majority of them. So they have family plan field trips that they're unaware of because parents, <laughs> and then that whole debacle happens where they're gone for two weeks and you're like, you're stuck. Yeah. So, and it's like, then I have to pull staff from there to go on field trips every other week. And it's, it, it stinks for them because you feel like you're leaving them behind without much. Mm -hmm. um, and, and from my perspective, if we could identify 12 kids who want to be like car style and, and get the training, yeah. mm -hmm. we'd, we'd send them away for training now, pay for the training, and get the promise that this is going to work for us. Yeah. And then you have you know, conceivably 12 candidates. Uh, uh, yeah, I've been working uh, very closely with our uh, current rec director, Skyler, Mr. B. Um, he works up at Arwood as the case manager um, for kiddos, and he's always advocating for kids to come down and join or just to come check out the program as a whole because it is a really fun program. I'm excited to start creating more programs for them in the future. How old would they have to be to be a lifeguard? Lifeguard, so you have to be 16. I have day camp staff. That's why we do the junior uh, camp house that roll at 14. We transition the offer here where you're like, I don't want to be a camp. <laughs> but um, yeah, typically 16 is the starting age for lifeguards. Yeah. And they can't take the class until they're 16? You have to be 16. To take the class. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So are you seeing a, de a decline in interest, or what is it that's... I just think it's with coming out of, I mean, it really hasn't been an issue to public yet. It really didn't. Um, I never had heard of, I've been working for Facebook for years, um, so I've been around for a while. Um, but even those 
when Debbie was on, we didn't really have any difficulties with like guards and COVID net. I just don't think anybody really wants to work that much anymore. Um, we just have to play through the schools, but we just have to really get the word out there and let it be known that Waterbury has a hell of a pool and we're ready to run the clock in the summertime. Or if you want to join us, go on over there. So, um, but I guess sorry to be around a little bit. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just the regular pay should be uh, more accurate to actually the proposed budget that we have for next year with uh, me being more comfortable coming into the summertime, uh, actually being able to sit down and have a really stern talking with my staff. I was correlated kind of going over hours, scheduling hours, um, and kind of doing more time related things going with them uh, forward. And the way I, I look at the pool is, you know, it's, it's got about 50 grand in revenue and 100 grand in expenses. Mm -hmm. It's really a bit more expensive than that because we don't have the overhead allocated there. Um, but it's, um, you know, that's the target is to just try to improve that ratio each year. Yeah, I mean, it's been coming on past to be right around a $60,000 yeah. deficit running. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then sounds like it's more of that. Since we're on the pool, before we continue further down, we want to talk about the, the twelve thousand for the study. Mm -hmm. um, so Alec has been the town's engineer for a long time. Um, Alec and I uh, have spent some time just talking about the age of the pool. Um, and he's familiar with the work history, and so I thought it best to have Alec work on a scope of services and, and I didn't want to hire I know there are specialty pool engineering firms but I didn't envision a 50 thousand plus study uh, for someone to tell us that we have an old pool mm -hmm. uh, and it's some work um, but the main theme I talked about with Alec is let's identify the the useful life which could be 20 years could be negative three years I'm not sure um, uh, let's get a good maintenance plan going forward to, to make sure we hit that life. And let's just make sure we're in a position where if he says, hey, in, in five years, we think there's a major investment that will have to happen. Um, let's just approach it on our own timeline. Um, and part of part of the budget, that $12,000 will include taking a core concrete sample and setting that away for testing. Um, part of it will include, if you look at Pool in the shallow and there are these sort of big bubbles in the liner. Um, trying to figure out how to how to correct that, what the root cause is. That's um, a fiberglass liner. Yep. Fiberglass, and it's yeah. it's not original. There's another fiberglass over concrete, probably over something else before mm -hmm. that. There's there's a lot of layers. And then it's also inspecting like the pumps and drain system. Uh, so I think it's money well spent. Um, and it's not a huge item, so I think that it's appropriate just embedded in the budget for recreation and not necessarily have it as a special article to be worn and not request article funds for it. I think it's base maintenance of future planning. Yeah. Remember years ago, there was a proposal. Three million dollars to replace that. We probably should have given it. Mm, one bit out now. How many years ago was that? Mm. Chris, do you recall when that from the years ago that was? Uh, <clears throat> not that much. Five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. I hate to be done with and um, sorry to interrupt, but uh, the um, the drain down of the Waterbury Reservoir uh, is that scheduled yet? Not to my knowledge. Not yet. No, no, I, I there are any thoughts? I know I'm involved with the French and Waterbury Reservoir, and we meet with the committee with A and R that uh, and discuss the whole thing, but there's nothing concrete at this point. Uh, but they're going to do something. You know, it's quite a just there's not a direct part of the map in the now. Mm -hmm. I mean, something would be like the whole season of my water. Oh, I would think it may it might be multiple seasons. Mm -hmm. well, that would fix the case. Yeah, yeah. and parody. Because it was down for many years, uh, like 15 years ago or something. Yeah. Right, or went down then and, you know, that 
can't remember that. It was out of commission right? But I bet you three seats. So much more. Just the key. On the one hand, that improves our bottom line. Mm -hmm. cool. yeah. Yeah. On the other hand, if we've got to do some maintenance in the pool, it's likely that's not a winter project. Right. So right. we'd like to do it in a year when the reservoir is at the full capacity. Mm -hmm. That makes yeah. sense. How do you deal with chlorine management? Because I know chlorine is a pretty toxic chemical. Um, so we, I usually just buy it and then our water pipe comes down and I'll get for them. Um, but I, I, I'm not too familiar with that, to be honest. But when you drain that, you know, chlorine waters or any further. Oh, like, yeah. So all the, like, are you talking about like, towards the end of the summer? Where right. Getting rid of it? Yeah, we just we bleed it through. Um, that way, you know, we do use it all. Like, we do have a set budget for it. So we try to use it up before the end, summer ends. But like this past summer, we still had like a quarter of the tank still filled with chlorine. And um, Scott and Brad during the time still were there and they just went through and let it. Through. It's better to start like not storing our stuff up you now. It's right. not really good to have that around. Um, so yeah. we, we we burn through it um, towards the end of the summer, and it does you know suck because you don't want to burn through it all at once and maybe have more programming options going along as you're doing it. But um, yeah. having that set time frame uh, for when you do close the pool. Um, I'm curious to see with just the winter weather this year. The summertime might be a little longer this year for programming. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I do have, um, I just noticed one thing, um, just over the eight years with the pool and the, just the weekends in general. Um, I, I know like a lot of public, uh, do like having it open on the weekend, but I do see when I drive by that there's not a ton of public people actually using the pool. Um, I think this is a great opportunity to have me run with programs on the weekends, kind of implement, I don't know, maybe like a, Older elderly like um, water aerobics class that would be more accommodating for a certain group of individuals. Or maybe it's just we do a full weekend day with camp staff and kids again, uh, where we open stuff and have like, just a full day for a few hours every weekend. Something um, I've been saying a lot is when you look around the state at the, the bigger towns and the bigger rec programs, is they, they start new programming all the time. And yeah. if it's not successful, then they stop it. Yeah. Um, they're not wedded to it. And I think that's one of the keys to just be entrepreneurial. You just try and, and try, try it out. out. And if there's demand, there's demand. If there's if there's not, you kind of like know. why we're in their program. Yeah. Yeah. So that's would it the, make yeah. more sense to bring an instructor to Waterbury from St. From St. Albans, opposed to bringing, say, a dozen I kids to St. Albans. Like you get kids trained before, yeah. well before the pool opens. So I, I send them tomorrow for training somewhere, whether it's St. Albans or elsewhere. I think we do that. Yeah, I, I would I would probably personally keep them in our bands that we have right. that they're getting trained. And I'm also familiar with the training. So if they do have any questions, I'll be able to answer with my previous background. So, yeah. And then at some point, hopefully, we can train the trainer as well. Right, yeah. right. I was just thinking of your weekends. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, um, yeah, no, it's, it's stunk because this year we couldn't, just because the lifeguard difficulties, we haven't been able to do any um, programs related to swimming, like swim lessons that we usually offer, like at Golden Eagle and other. So mm -hmm. um, there's my directors are both at college in their way, um, and the high schoolers have. Uh, being my high schooler to the pool staff are very athletic, <laughs> I will say. Um, so they're year-round sports. It's, it's hard to manage that on weekends when they have games and practices all week. And it's ultimately, I had to make the decision to um, ask out of source uh, groups to see um, if they could provide, like our previous pool director, Keith, if he was going to provide private lessons for kiddos just to be able to accommodate that um, necessity because it, it's, a, it's a great program that we run, an out of season program that we run through them. Um, and my hope is to bring it back in the spring if I can do, do find somebody to be able to run it. Um, but yeah, I think just having the mindset overall with the pool, um, just because Christy thought about um, just having that consistent um, 40 to like $60,000 um, debt you take every year from trying to keep it and manage it and keep it open. I think um, I miss, think we're missing like the picture of it is just we just need to pack it all the time, just have more people there, more programming on out of there. 
and just keep that place packed as the more programming that Nick has done through um, Waterbury more related, it has flourished and become unbelievable through the four years that I've been a part of it for the amount of kids that come through here, the out of state kids that attend weekly or cold summer now, just because we have the kind of family that we built down there that they love it. And it's, uh, it's a great, it's a great program and food and after food. It's I'll praise him for it because uh, he brought it up, but I helped him along the way with it. So it was nice to have some of my ideas implemented and kind of run away. And you and you see that in the program revenues and expenses. Yeah. There was an the issue yeah. last year where there was a software glitch. And so learning yeah. the summer day camp is capped. And before anyone figured out all these kids were enrolled, so to everyone's credit, they made it work. Yeah, it's, um, um, summer camp usually no. town meeting day sells out in less than five minutes. It's the quickest selling program. It's the largest program that we have to offer. Don't we do that? Yeah, mm -hmm. and like you know, it's it's tough because sometimes your instinct as the manager is to look at the rates and say, "Hey, this program sold out in five minutes." If you were thinking like the private sector, you'd say, "Well, we can afford to jack up the rates," but we call it summer programming. It's supporting the local economy by being an affordable daycare provider. And so if we jack up the rates, I mean, yeah, they probably should go up a little bit every year or so, but um, all those folks that are living in Waterbury and work in Waterbury or the area. So we're not really helping ourselves on a net basis, I think. Yeah. Yeah, the my rates of the crash doesn't matter. <laughs> Our uh, platform town meeting day went through an update at 8 a.m. when it opened. I just had this previously happened about a week ago with vacation signups. Um, but it pushes through basically anyone who wants to sign up. So usually we had, a, I think, our app is set to 185 for this past summer, and we ended up with around 240. Mm -hmm. So we had much, much more. So, like, you'll see the difference um, in the revenues. Um, it's majorly because the site had failed, and then we just had to bear the beast at that point. And you yeah. know, now it works, so that's that's a new number. If there's that many, yeah, you so think you gotta stick with 243 or I'm gonna try? I think we're gonna try, and I, I think it'll be well. It's done, I, it was the most fun program I think Waterbury's ever had. I'd love mm -hmm. to have more kids. I'd love to sit in front of you in three years and say we're at 350. Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. to some extent you're well, going to sell your facilities, but. <laughs> but I think the community demands even higher than we can accommodate now. I think. Yeah. Do you have any adult water aerobics programs? I, I don't have any implemented right now. No. And I don't believe there have been any implemented prior uh, to I'm curious. I know Nation Water is a really real interest in water aerobics. It's very, you know, with everyone's getting older joints and you know, things, you know, water or open I mean, I mean, I mean, <laughs> like so you saw your yeah, <laughs> something I'm researching like is I've I've I gotta work the phones and this is might be one of those things that's not possible, but I've called Medicare supplemental plans and so I've, cover that. I've asked if there were seniors <laughs> mm -hmm. that took programming classes that are would they pay the membership fee? Mm -hmm. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things where I'm battling by calling 800 numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I may not get there. A lot of times they will because it, to me it makes sense because it has the savings in other areas by, you know, it's a pretty low cost with any kind of, you know, joint kind of things. It's been, you know, really a, you know, it, it's an expensive proposition, because I know well. We had, a, we had an audience question. It's sort of by the question, but it's also something else. And you mentioned that when you have that many people uh, interested, you know, you might want to raise the rates, but obviously the other thing is to increase capacity. Mm. And black board in this town may have an opportunity to support the right and increase the capacity by looking at some of the facilities uh, that could be accessed. And obviously, the um, Oakside School, Oakside Elementary School, Oakside Primary School is, um, is a place that sometimes WEC has had access to and sometimes not. And that's also why I think uh, it's the town facility as well as, as much as it is um, 
school records, and it's also a kind of, you know, it seems to be a place where we want to expand access. Not something you said, but we feel about it. Yeah, I, I know that um, just in the past, uh, even before Nick was uh, uh, a spec in a lot of <laughs> um, uh, when I was still working with Dead, and we had done some summer programming out of the armory, which was a really, really nice spot to do. Um, they had like indoor basketball, they had a lot of equipment out, which is not okay, but <laughs> um, but we did a hiking like, fishing program out of there, and it was really, really fun and super close to all the facilities down out here. Um, I know we had chatted briefly about that as maybe an option in the future, but I do know um, Brookside does not have another uh, care facility ran out of that during the summertime. We do have a summer program out of there too, um, which is why we've had access to it here periodically throughout um, the years, but we tend to just kind of um, let them roll with their own spot. We kind of settled down by reaching out to these other um, churches uh, to be able to accommodate the space. Um, I, I do think just for the, the capacity, the concern for it, I think if we get above 250 with the current sites that we have, um, it's going to be very difficult on just staff as a whole. Because um, the rec building is not that large. Um, when I was a kiddo, we had 90 in there, which is unbearable even mm -hmm. as a kid. Um, and we currently have 30 uh, over the past summer out of there with uh, about five to six staff daily. Um, and still, you can see it's fairly loud in there with all even the improvements that we've done over the original size of the building to keep it maintained and good in this. And to move on to the admin and building expenses and joining the buildings, the, the staffing plan is to think of the thing as it was this time last year budget for a director and then essentially partly through the year have funding for a program coordinator. Um, so we're <laughs> uh, we're at a similar point. Um, a couple other little things I want to point out in that side. Um, first is there's a note about card slash at payment option. Um, we're just talking about um, better ways to get paid remotely. Um, and, and some of that is um, maybe it's we um have, have different that you know maybe we buy a commercial freezer for the pool and we're looking at that expand our concession options but um i don't love the idea of cash no one from the, from the financial risk management perspective loves cash and, and a lot of people don't carry it including myself mm -hmm. um but people you know people have then people have other payment platforms so if we're gonna generate income we've got to modernize and, and accept payments that way um, so we're just functioning a little amount there to see if we might have some transition expenses to go with that. But if we can do it and generate revenue, um, it might make it easy. Um, and it might also help with fundraising, reflecting donations, given that's how people do it these days. Um, another piece on the, you know, the admin and building expenses, and I've presented REC here, but also the Fund 75, which is the Recreation Capital Budget. So Fund 75 um, will end 2022 with about $50,000 in the fund balance. So there's there's something there for future progress. Not a ton, but something there for a down payment. So in this budget, we are sending uh, that on the second page, that line 96, we're sending 79500 to Fund 75. And in fund 75, we're spending a little under 50. So we're saving 30 according to the plan. So that's 30. If there's overages, it'd be a little less, we could a little more, but so we build in that recreation capital fund a little bit. And part of my thinking there is there might be a decision of the pool. And then part of it is obviously there's the ice center arena study, um, that parks planning study. Um, so far what that group, um, is leaning towards is that you know there doesn't really require any additional investment at Hope Davy, but the ice center might. So we could, in theory, at the end of 2023, have more like eighty thousand dollars in that fund balance. Um, and then the capital fund, there's there's nothing huge, um, some standard amounts I think for uh, building and, and field improvements and maintenance, um, but nothing dramatic. Um, 
And that's where I embedded the pool study, the $12,000. Um, and then parks and fields. Um, really, that's that's uh, Bill Woodruff and Celia, um, but we went over. I went over it with them. Um, and that's a pretty standard budget based on what they needs, uh, what their needs are. The the salary comes from Public Works. That person is in the Highway Department budget for half the year and transitions over. Mm -hmm. um, and. That's based on who we have today, so I think it's probably pretty reasonable there. Um, and I think the rest of the, you know, the increase there is on the salary side. Um, the rest of it is basically what they're funded. Um, but we we tend to spend in that hundred thousand dollar range each year on the parks. Um, so the the bottom line on, on that bottom page, I don't know if you like the way I presented that or not. I just said I use a four hundred thousand dollar home as a printer. Maybe that's too low in today's market. It will be when we reappraise. Um, <laughs> but I just thought your mm -hmm. your recreation programs in total, your parks and your fields, which I tend to think of as mesh, um, cost you a little under 200 bucks. And we're proposing an increase of under less than $5. Um, so anything like the $12,000 pool study, anything that we we will do the pool study, but I assume as soon as we would do anything would be in 2024. So the study would, would start in the spring and it wouldn't take forever. We'd have we'd have that done um, in a few months. You mean repairs? Right. Tell you about yeah. the recommendation. <laughs> right. it, 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 it may be that um, I don't want to prejudge a study. It, it may be that right. um, in fact he says that we've got so maybe we can spend Six figures just to make up a number, but maybe we can spend a hundred grand and, and based on that, that we've got five plus years of useful life. Right. Um, quite frankly, hoping he says something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of it Give depends on some the second ball skew the budget one that we were going to do something this year versus actually no plans to do anything this year. Or right. we could could in theory be a, a more major item in 2024 years beyond. Right. Has the Little League Field uh, up by uh, Hope Davey been regraded? Do you know? Uh, that was a constant issue with the Little League. Uh, I think there's a lip right in front of shortstop. And I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 don't don't know. <laughs> I know I've got <laughs> I know I've got additional detail from Celia, which talks about the different soils, and you know she's got a bunch of clay from this. Yeah, place. and she's got a bunch of supplies out there, but I just. Well, dealt with a couple of requests. So then it, it doesn't request. sound like a request that we can't accommodate. So I can guarantee you that we're going to look at the Little League Field and update. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the same thing as I mentioned with the pool study, we have the rec study going on. You know, we might have some fairly, you know, maybe from accessibility at the, you know, whatever Central Park and stuff like that that might. I think that's a more immediate kind of issue. Yeah, but what I I met with the recognition, I think at their last meeting, um, and they've got vacancies. I don't know how many seats you have open right now, Bill. Well, I guess uh, going to eleven and five. Mm -hmm. So you've got six on your eleven seats and five vacancies. Yeah, but I I think that. You know, that committee is going to have some work to do over the next mm. year or two. So if you're looking for people to sit on it, now's a great time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like the fact that you talked about you know, possibly trying some new things. And if they're successful, Stick with them, and if they're not, stop them over the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just uh, there's you can recreate wherever you want. Real, realistically, you can, and I think just having that availability to be able to hone in on one area that we're really struggling with, um, and really trying to implement programming after programming after programming. And I, I'm going to have to have a conversation with my staff, and I'm going to make them aware they might. 
look different. It's coming summer, but we're going to try it out and see how it goes. If it's way too much for them, um, this is where I can kind of maybe expand and go with different options. See where we're going to um, go with that, or maybe um, for the other half of the position for uh, program coordinator and rec director, since he got split, um, maybe that's the responsibility that falls under one of those roles as well, where they can kind of more focused honed in on, um, you know, making sure that the pool is run in that aspect, at least for the summer, um, very smoothly, very well managed, and kind of having that head of the home there to be able to really rely on and push this, um, you know, new, uh, newly implemented program uh, through and kind of um, make sure that it does end up going well. Um, uh, it, it would be honestly nice just to have new programming in town too. Um, I know like so does play football. I did play football out there. I loved it. I had a class every Sunday I'd go up there and just play one game, and then you have a weekend tournament on at the end of the season where you play every game, the best of the best, whatever you want. Cool. But I mean, you have so many encompassing towns just around Waterbury too, where it's like, it's a huge theater program to come in and just even being able to offer um, croquet or hockey ball or different programs that people don't really think of, but there's always somebody who loves the idea of doing that. And what I think about Chris is we've got facilities, we've got marketing reach, and we've got the, the software, and our, our software that we use is essentially it's a programming revenue collection software. So if if, if somebody wanted to to do some programming at our facilities let's use our software let's use our marketing reach and you don't need to be a business you can just be a vendor of the town we collect the money and then we pay you and we got to take our administrative cut to cover overhead but it, but there's a there's a way for people to there's a way for the town to leverage that yeah so we don't have to run the program but if someone calls us up and say i want to Whatever I want to teach dog training mm -hmm. on one of your fields. Great. Actually, so, during COVID, it was yoga. Yes, look, oh yeah. Okay. Everybody yeah. wanted outdoor yoga, yoga fields. We have the <laughs> We've got the email distribution list. We've got the software, so we'll market it. People can enroll through our website, and and we'll pay you. And let's let's work together and generate some revenue. Yeah, it's like uh, I mean, we were talking about it the other day, but even just like you know how to play the guitar and want to play the guitar. It's a forum like that. It's like somebody has interest in it. It's simple email that I can point to. Hey, we have somebody who can offer that. And you just get a bunch of emails that come in and send them to that person. It's, uh, they're the leader of the program. Um, we're just, I guess, more sort of like the, the middleman situation. Like we're making sure that they're good and the person that's getting lessons from them, they're, they're getting what they want. And, I mean, they're happy. I mean, everybody does one of my major concerns, you know, keeping a positive res revenue stream and, uh, you know, taking it off the nets, sinking ships. Yeah. yeah. You're going to move on to something that isn't, and, and, uh, and that only just helps the bottom line and helps everybody. Yeah. So, I, I just, I think ultimately, too, just having that stuff there is going to be more out. There and you have more people just doing, you know, not picking these up all day. I'm an old soul, sorry, but I can't look at that. It's boring, like my eyes hurt. <laughs> but it's just, I, I think Waterbury as a whole will be much in a better place because of, the, I guess, the plans that I kind of want to, you know, implement. And that's the vision I see for it. Um, there's always something going on. There's always something for Waterbury. Well, that I think you can get the get the money from your neighbors are just doing that's, that's something that has really been lost in, in the town here. You know, from people, especially from people like my perspective, you used to know everybody, and now you don't. It's the way and I wish there was easy way to correct that. Have you thought about working with like the we're very um, so fish and game club on co opting things with island clubs. Well, I think like they have two ponds there, you could give yeah. instruction 
and they have like with the let's go fishing program with yeah. Vermont Fisher. Yeah, we they would stock the ponds and the kids would have a kind of a, a blast, you know, you know, you know, it's not real fish. It's I can't I say it's not real fishing, yeah. but you know, kids love just catching a fish. And then also they have a set up, you know, under ed programs and yeah. stuff like that, you know, be a good, you know, with your reach and they probably need to figure out ways to get more client help through, through their doors. Personally, I might run a fishing program myself. <laughs> but um yeah, I mean, I guess I guess like I'm a jack of all trades, like you like you name it, I I usually have done that in the past. I still do like hunting programs. I I'd be glad to help. I'm a let's go fishing instructor. I would love to do something. Like yeah. That. I think the class is a well worth class to take. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, I don't know how many years it was. Four years ago, we did it down at the. Yeah. I mean, it was fun. I wasn't a part of it. I was I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah something to get kids outside. Do you have uh, any more information about the availability of the armory? I do not. Um, my, I, I spoke to, um, I forget her name, but a lady with the Department of Military yeah. last week, and I asked about getting in there for the summer for recreation, mm -hmm. and she said it'll be a few weeks before she can really get back to me because it's a giant mess right now because we're moving out. Mm -hmm. um, but but uh, her understanding was that it, that the National Guard is no further use for the building, but a different state agency might. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, we need a legislative uh, initiative to get access, or is that TBD? I think that's to be determined. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I just wanted to, I don't know if this is associated with recreation, but uh, as we talked at the beginning, at our Rotary uh, meeting, they said, maybe mentioned to Tom, but a lot of times we order fireworks for the NQID in January because we get a lot better prices. And fireworks, you know, that's one reason why Montpelier canceled their fireworks to the display. But I think fireworks costs have gone up about 35%. So, you know, we might need to make some decisions on that in a shorter, you know, array. You know, I mean, you know, I spoke to Karen, we probably need to get some prices and stuff like that. But is it North Star mm -hmm. that we get the fireworks from? Mm -hmm. And just, you know, it probably would be good to, you know, at least figure that out, maybe get that on next, next, um, you know, maybe a mid-month agenda to see if we want to go ahead because take advantage of the, you know, early pricing to make a lot of sense. Does the town pay for those mm -hmm. fireworks? Yeah, we yeah. pay for the fireworks, you know, so the rotary oh, does most of the NQI fuses. Excuse me? Rotary lights and fuses? No, we think we I think North Star does. Yes. Oh, okay. all that. And I, since I just learned about this a few minutes ago, I can't tell you historically what we paid for fireworks. I think okay. it's about that large. Right. It's ten, eleven thousand dollars. So we might see it going up to like thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars this year. I don't want to blow up the five minutes we put on here. So uh something to add to when we do talk about it would be cleanup. Because as someone who walks that path every day, I really struggle being out there and seeing the waste. It's 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 a lot, and I try to pick it up every time I'm out there. But it is a lot of cardboard and paper waste, and it's right by the river. It's definitely North going to the river. Clean that up. I mean, I don't know who likes them. I don't know who's observing. <laughs> they blow up. It's dark, pitch dark in the middle of the night. So whether it's community volunteers paying people, you know, the Rotary, whatever it is, it's right. It's certainly a, a problem, and especially in our town, you know, we, we care about our town and environment and cleanliness. So it's something I want to put on the radar. I agree. Um, and yeah. I'm not making a promise here. I don't want to get too far over my skis, but <laughs> hopefully at the next meeting, I'll have an estimated tax rate for 
Mm. Right. And so that will inform some of these spinning matters mm -hmm. from the new period. But like I said, I might be over my skis a little bit here. So we love it if we are. <laughs> so to your point, Danny, it's funny you should mention that because today I went to this driving up the path line place and noticing the tons of litter along the side of Duffel Road, and I just said to myself, these people are so disrespectful about the planet they live on that they got to throw shit out the window all the time. It's just, I mean, we just had green up, mm -hmm. and, and it's nothing but a pig pen up through there. It just mm -hmm. really yeah, it makes it makes it fun, right? I'm telling you. Sometimes after the big windstorms, I know things come from like the dump and or piles or whatever, but it's yeah, it makes me really sad to see. And especially something we can control. Like we're we're paying for it and creating it as a town. So right. I think we could do better as a town to take responsibility and think about it ahead of time. <clears throat> That's it. Okay. There's something else on that or item. Um contractual <laughs> uh, negotiations. Uh, we're going to go into executive session. So. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Appreciate it. This is easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, they're going into executive session. <laughs> Oh no, I just need a motion and then also we spell on. So you need a motion to yeah, so we have a motion. Move to go executive session to discuss a matter pertaining to the I'll second the motion. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion to carry. We are now in the executive session.